Hey, Andrew. Hi, how are you? Good. Uh, thank you for sitting down and taking the time. I really appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. Um, so my first question is, how were you first exposed to anime and the Eastern Asian philosophy? I was through Dragon Ball Z and other anime uh, in uh, the Toonami block, you know, classic American story of a young boy who came back after school and turned on the TV and discovered the wonderful world of anime. Uh, Gundam Wing, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, Running Warriors, all those great shows. And I just gravitated toward Dragon Ball Z, and that led to a fascination with East Asian culture. Uh, and there's just an endless world of things to explore, and uh, it's it's incredible. Um, at, at what point, you know, you obviously began watching Dragon Ball Z at a very early age. At what point did you begin to write about Dragon Ball Z? That was in 2003. I was a student at Western Michigan University. And uh, prior to that, Dragon Ball Z had inspired me to start practicing Shaolin Kung Fu. And I did that at a place called Chan's Kung Fu in Grand Rapids, Michigan. There I studied um, Southern styles, Northern styles, also Tai Chi and Qigong. And just got really into you know the energy practices and just the philosophies of the Budo Taoist way of life. And... I finally ended up making that my major in school. So I decided I'm going to study East Asian studies. And I got a minor in Chinese. And while I was doing all of this, I was seeing, seeing parallels between what I was studying in school and hearing my professor talk about and what was in Dragon Ball Z. You know, the concepts of reincarnation, the spiritual energy, different dimensions of heaven and hell and earth in between. And all of these concepts, I'm like, I, I need to find out more about this. And so I went online, but there was nothing available. I mean, like, nobody was talking about this. All you could find was somebody said, oh, yeah, Dragon Ball is based off Journey to the West, the ancient Chinese legend about the Monkey King and the monk, and they traveled to India to recover the sutras. That's all you could find, and it was just a little blurb. And I said, you kidding me? That's it? So I realized that there was a huge gap here, and I needed to, to come in and fill that gap. So I started to write these uh, insights that I had down, and before you knew it, I'm like, wow, this is becoming a book. You know, I had this big table of contents, and it was just expanding and expanding, and I realized, okay, I'm going to have to write seven books, because this is just so big, and so this was in 2003, and I've been working on it ever since, and, you know, like the series that I have coming out right now, Dragon Ball Culture, that I've been writing for 12 years, and it's really just a huge project, a big labor of love, and um, I think it, it, there is a need for it. People are, are saying they really appreciate it and they, they uh, are glad to see all the things that they knew were sort of there, but they couldn't explain. They didn't know how to put words to it, you know, to that feeling that they had. And so that's what I do. I come in and I, I show them Dragon Ball in a new light. Now, you, you wrote the book, Dragon Ball Z. It's over 9,000 when world... When worldviews collide, you touched on it a little bit. Where did your inspiration truly come from to make that step to write a book? Uh, it mostly came from the spiritual practice called Falun Dafa. It's a Chinese meditation practice. And it was through practicing that that I really started to see the spiritual concepts in the show and also the psychological and philosophical concepts. And... I've just been studying Akira Toriyama's work for so many years, I started to see these themes that um, nobody else was talking about. And the It's Over 9000 meme was so popular, I decided to use that as the vehicle to express these concepts. So people go, oh, it's over 9000, I can't believe you put that on the title of the book, you know? But it's a hook that grabs people and it makes them laugh, and then they say, okay, well, what's this really about? And so I use that as like, you know, it's only, it's really only a minute long, like that whole segment, right? But it explains so much about Goku and Vegeta, and you can extrapolate that to reveal their different worldviews in conflict and how Akira Toriyama uses opposites of one another, like the yin and the yang, uh, to 
develop his plot, to help those characters grow as people, and then how that relates to you and your humanity. So I thought that would be a really interesting topic. And uh, it was actually just supposed to be one bonus book that was supposed to be like a sort of side project that I did for a bigger book called The Tao of Dragon Ball, which was going to be this huge magnum opus of like all of these Taoist things. But that was such a huge project that it's still not done. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to release this and see what people think. And so that was my first book. And I thought, let's see what people think about it. And so far, uh, almost unanimous praise. People seem to love it. And I'm really happy about that, that there's actually an audience for what I am doing. And uh, people are supporting my writing. So I'm really grateful for that. Now, how did you learn about the unknown history about that meme that, that you touch upon in the book? I just did a lot of research. <laughs> uh, I spend a lot of time just on the internet, scouring different sites, you know, also reading books and things, just trying to gain different perspectives. Um, but there's, there are other Dragon Ball fans who do a lot of research and they, they focus on the trivia. My focus is on what it means to you as a person. So I have to combine a lot of different fields together, you know, from uh, sociology to anthropology, just history, different cultures. Like China has 5,000 years of culture and history. So I have to become an expert in that. And then same thing with Japan and then India. And, and then you got the, the American culture as well in the West. And so I have to study all of these things and then fuse them together and then explain them to you in a very simple manner that's, that's easy to understand. So it takes a long time. And then uh, I have to synthesize all of that into a simple sentence or two. But it's rewarding in the end. So um, really, yeah, how did I come up with it? It's just like a lot of work, and then you and then you just think about it. And like, okay, well, what does that mean? And then I just write it. And uh, in the end, it makes sense, and it's really cool. It's fun. Now to switch focus to your other book and your entire series, uh, Dragon Ball Culture, where did you get your inspiration for that? That I realized I needed to write because the Tao of Dragon Ball was trying to do way too many things at once. Like, it was it's just, I mean, it was going to be thousands of pages long. And I said, this is impossible. Nobody's going to want to read this thing. I probably won't even be able to publish it. So I have to get Dragon Ball Culture done first. And so what that book is, is it's a really detailed, in-depth analysis of the Dragon Ball manga, page by page, panel by panel going through all the things that Akira Toriyama brings to us. Uh, and it shows you the traditional culture behind uh, Son Goku. You know, he's based on the Monkey King, his magical cloud, his magical staff, the turtle hermit. He's based off of these ancient Senin concepts, these um, mystical hermits, who themselves are based off of the ancient Chinese concepts inherited from China. And, like, every single character and every scenario or environment that they go through has some sort of cultural connection to it. <clears throat> but but Kira Toriyama never explains any of this to his audience. He just gives you action and more action, and he goes from one scene to the next. It's always moving forward at, like, a really fast pace. So the audience, like, if they're, if they're aware of these symbols, then they start to pick up on it, and they go, oh, hey, that's that thing, or that makes me feel like that thing that I saw in a movie somewhere, but they can't quite place it. So this book shows you all of those connections and it just, it's, it's over 2000 pages long. It's in seven volumes and it's just a huge labor of love that, um, if you're a Dragon Ball fan, it will completely change the way that you view the series and you'll see it with new eyes. It's, it's a really incredible project. Now to change the focus again, um, Obviously, you, you have done a lot of work on the fan-based movie uh, Light of Hope that just came out. How did you get that opportunity to work on that and create that? Fortunately, having started this uh, project in 2003, I created a website for it in 2006 and have created a brand uh, called the Dow of Dragon Ball that has established me as an expert on the Dragon Ball series. So when this company, Robot Underdog, in Los Angeles wanted to do a live-action Dragon Ball Z, 
they had a writer, but uh, the script that they wrote, they weren't happy with. So they said, well, who else can we find? And somebody on their Facebook page recommended me. So they contacted me, and I happened to be in Los Angeles at the time. And they said, hey, you want to get together? We can talk about this. And I said, oh, yeah, sure. So we went out to dinner, and they, they pitched the project to me. And at the time, I hadn't really seen any of their work, you know. And there was like, I, it's not the first time somebody had pitched to me, hey, why don't we do a, a live-action Dragon Ball Z project? Why don't you write the script for me? You know, like a 90-minute feature film. And I'm like, oh, boy, you know, that's going to be a lot of work. Uh, and I wasn't really keen on doing it because nobody had really done it well before. But these guys, they had the confidence, and they just felt like they could really pull it off. So I said to myself, well, this is going to be a lot of work. I don't know what I'm going to do here. But uh, I thought, what would Goku do? And then when I asked myself that question, the immediate answer was he would do it. He would see it as an opportunity to you know, increase his power and like become a better person. And I said, all right, yeah, sure. It's going to be a challenge, but let's do it. So I said yes, and then uh, after that, I wrote uh, all of the episodes, and we came up with like a pro you know project plan. We got storyboards together, and it just it just grew from there. Yeah, I mean it's it's a great project to be a part of. Uh, are you surprised that the way it's been received? I mean, I checked about twenty minutes ago, and it's over ten million views. I mean, does that surprise you? Uh, it does. I'm, I'm happy about it. I think it's great. And, uh, you know, you can't expect that kind of thing. It's just like you put it out there and you, you hope for the best. And I think that the fans have really gravitated to it because it stays true to the source material. Unlike Dragon Ball Evolution and, uh, you know, some other fan films that try to change things around, uh, we've tried to stay as true to the source material as possible. And also, it does it in a way that is realistic. You know, people can believe it when they see it. Like, it feels like a TV show or it feels like real life. And people say we did the impossible. So uh, I think this is a game changer. I think there are ways we can improve it. We're going to do even better on episode two. But I think that this sets the bar for live action Dragon Ball Z. And people said it couldn't be done, and, and we did it. So I'm happy about that. You know, that was our main objective. The, the fact that we've made over 10 million people happy is just icing on the cake, you know? And it's great. It's great to see. Uh, I'm, really, I'm really happy about the result. Is there an expected date for Episode 2 to come out, or is it still in production? It's still in pre-production. Uh, we are accepting donations uh, so that we can get the funding to do Episode 2, because this is a non-profit project. So the people who really liked it, please donate to it. Even a dollar makes a big difference. Um, right now, we are far short of, the, of our funding goal. We don't know uh, exactly how much we're going to need, but we did that first episode on a $10,000 budget, and we are probably going to need maybe four or five times as much for episode two because the stuff that I wrote in the script is just like, there's a lot of action, you know. There's a lot of city fights. I can say, go. Something might happen to Gohan. That's going to require some intense special effects. Uh, and so we really need your support. Uh, but I think it's going. We're going to do it with whatever we can. You know, we are committed to this project, and we'll do whatever it takes. It's it's going to be great. Now, the final few questions. Being that you've researched Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball. Who is your favorite hero character? Uh, it's definitely Goku. He is the one who inspires me the most. I think he's an ideal to strive for. And, you know, he's like, he's almost a perfect human. If you just, if you take away his voracious uh, eating habits and things like that, like, he's innocent, he's just kind-hearted, but he knows when to fight and to stand up for things that uh, should be stood up for. He's a defender of others. And most of all, he just knows how to endure and commit and stay disciplined and focused on what is really important in life. So I feel like he's someone that uh, people connect with, you know? And to me, he was there when I was younger, when I was a teenager, and I was getting picked on and bullied. And I said, no, that's Goku is Goku is the way to be. Like 
he's the one to try to emulate and he still is he's still the inspiration so i i mean yeah vegeta's cool he's got pride and all that stuff but uh goku is where it's at and who is your favorite villain Mm, I don't really have a favorite villain. I like them all for different reasons. I think uh, but each one of them, that's the thing about Kira Toyama, okay? He never explains any of this stuff, but each one of his villains has a great strength that is undercut by a great flaw. So in each of his characters, you can see a human trait that you connect with or you think is like a positive quality, but then it gets undercut by something else. So that's why I'm able to appreciate every single one of them i mean um cell thinks he's perfect right and that's that's hubris but he gets undercut by that exact thing uh and there's just that's the case for everyone so i like them all that's my answer and then the final question is what is your favorite arc in the dragon ball z slash dragon ball universe my favorite arc is the saiyan arc in dragon ball z and I think that's because it contains everything that you could want in a, in a story. You know, it's got super normal feats. It's got the afterlife. Goku comes back from the dead. He trains with a god. Uh, he fights this great villain who transforms into a giant ape. There's this huge beam battle. The fighting is just super intense. And it, it that to me screams Dragon Ball Z. Uh, 